That completes the docket call. We will take the cases in order in which they were called, beginning with Mr. Vega's case, case number 64481. Thank you, may it please the board. This is a compulsory discipline case respondent's conviction on May the 23rd, 2018 for failing to file a report of cash payment over $10,000 received in a trader business in violation of Title 31 United States Code sections 5331 and 5332 in the United States District Court for the Southern District of Texas, Brownsville Division. We filed our petition for compulsory discipline on June the 10th, 2020. Respondent was personally served with the petition and notice of hearing on June the 15th, 2020 by Miguel Garza, a private process server. Proof of service has been on file with the board since July the 13th, 2020. On October 25th, 2017, in cause number B151012, style the United States of America versus Guillermo Vega Jr. in the United States District Court for the Southern District of Texas Brownsville Division, respondent was indicted with count one, willfully attempting to evade and defeat income tax due in violation of Title 26, United States Code, Section 7201. Count two, willfully making under the penalty of perjury a material misrepresentation of his earnings on his United States individual income tax return in violation of Title 26, United States Code, Section 706, parentheses, one, close parentheses. Counts three through seven, knowingly and willfully fail, filing a false report of cash payments over $10,000 received in a trader business in violation of Title 31, United States Code, sections 3331 and, I'm sorry, 5331 and 5322. Count three was for the representation of Jose Luis Zuniga. Count four was for the representation of Jose Luis Duentes. Count five was for the representation of Armando Arismendi. Count six was for the representation of Juan Racon. And count seven was for the representation of Umberto Bazan. On May the 16th, 2017, in the same cause, respondent was charged by superseding indictment with counts one through seven were the same as charged in the indictment. Count eight, knowingly and willfully filing a false report of cash payment over $10,000 received in a trader business for the representation of Omar Pinales, AKA Botas, in violation of Title 31, United States Code, Section 5331 and 5322. On January 24th, 2017, respondent was charged with second superseding indictment with and in this case, counts one and eight are the same as the superseding indictment. Count nine, corruptly by threat and by threatening communication, influence, obstruct, and endeavor to corruptly influence, obstruct, and impede the due administration of justice in the United States of America versus Guillermo Vega Jr. in violation of Title 18, United States Code Sections 1503 and 1503A. And count witness tampering in the United States of America versus Guillermo Vega Jr. in violation of Title 18, United States Code Section 1512B1. On May the 23rd, 2018, a plea agreement was entered in cause number B-15-1012-S2 and styled the United States of America versus Guillermo Vega Jr in the United States District Court for the Southern District of Texas, Brownsville Division, wherein respondent pled guilty to count seven of the indictment, of the second superseding indictment. The government would dismiss all remaining counts at time of sentencing. The defendant agreed to make full restitution of the tax laws and pay the United States clerk a special assessment in the amount of $100 per conviction. On October the 24th, 2019, a judgment in a criminal case was entered in cause number 115-CR01012-S2-1 
style, the United States of America versus Guillermo Vega Jr. in the United States District Court, Southern District of Texas, uh, Brownsville Division, wherein respondent pled guilty to count 7SS on May the 23rd, 2018, failing to file a report of cash payment over $10,000 received in a trader business in violation of Title 31, United States Code, Section 5332 and 5332. I'm sorry, 533, 5332. Uh, respondent to the custody of the Federal Bureau of Prisons to be in prison for a total term of 13 months. Upon release, respondent will be on supervised for three years. He was further ordered to pay an assessment of $100, a fine in the amount of $100,000, and restitution in the amount of $126,000. $253. He is currently serving his sentence at home. At this time, I would like to offer the following exhibits. Exhibit one is a certified copy of the indictment dated November 12, 2015. Exhibit two is a certified copy of the superseding indictment dated May the 17th, 2016. Exhibit three is a certified copy of the second superseding indictment dated January the 24th, 2017. Exhibit four is a copy, a certified copy of the plea agreement dated May 23rd, 2018. Exhibit five is a certified copy of the judgment in a case dated October the 24th, 2019. Exhibit six is my original affidavit attesting to the fact that the uh, respondent is the same person as the defendant in the criminal case. Exhibit seven is the original certificate from Blake A. Hawthorne, clerk of the Supreme Court of Texas, dated July the 8th, 2020, indicating that respondent is licensed but not currently authorized to practice law in the state of Texas. And exhibit eight is a certified copy of an agreed judgment of private reprimand dated October the 10th, 2000, in grievance case number S2040002936. And I ask that these exhibits be admitted at this time. They are admitted. Thank you. We respectfully seek an entry of judgment of disbarment. Uh, Does anybody Mr. have any questions? Yeah, Mr. Berry, uh, Joe Cleveland for board. Uh, what is the legal basis for the CDC's contention that a violation of the failure to report statute is a serious crime under the uh, Texas Disciplinary Rules of Procedure 106 GG. It would be because it's um, it's deceitful. It would um, it would meet the standard of a crime involving more turpitude based on the deceitful nature of the action. Is deceit an element of the crime? I would have to, and I'm, I apologize, I don't have that right at this time. Uh, can I brief that for you all and get it to you? Do you, th do you think that uh, a failure to submit a report is a crime involving moral turpitude? I do. I think it's dishonest. Does a criminal defense attorney have a uh, duty not to disclose privileged information about who is paying his or her fee? This, <clears throat> I'm sorry. Um, we do not know who actually paid the fees. All we know is who the fee was paid for the representation of. Yeah, but does the does a an attorney have an obligation not to disclose who is paying his or her fee for the representation of the client? I would say probably yes, but he he still has to report that to the to the to the. Is that a disclosure of attorney-client confidences to the government? He has to report his income. Without it, he doesn't necessarily have to report where it came from, but if he, re I don't know exactly what the, um, and I can get that if, if um, you need it. I, I the, and the, and the indictment just said it was for the representation of, 
did not say who actually paid the fee. Now, does he have to, to say where he gets it? I don't know what the, the federal statute requires. I know he's required to report the income, which he did not do, which is dishonest. Are, are, is the board just to look at the elements of the crime to determine if it involves uh, a crime of moral turpitude or is the board allowed to look beyond the statute to the facts that are presented in the evidence you've provided? Or to look at the elements of the crime. Anyone else? Yes. I, I don't want to interrupt Joe if you're still going. I'm finished. Thank you. So, Mr. Barry, I, I have a question about the exhibits. Yes. Because the first few exhibits are just the indictments. And I know in, in many of our criminal trials, the first thing that it says in jury instructions is the indictment is not evidence. Now, in one of the portions of the, of the exhibits, there is an agreed factual basis for the plea, and it's very different than the indictments. And so to what extent is there supposed to be evidentiary value in the indictments themselves for the dismissed counts? For the dis I don't think there is, frankly. Um, and I would agree with that. I, we did that to, pre to present a total record to the board so that they have everything that we have on this generally. So, but as far as for compulsory discipline, I think it goes to, to the um, count to which he pled guilty. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else? Okay, the board will take this case under advisement.